Hi, as you can see the background, my uh, pulka is ready. In less than six weeks time, I'm leaving towards uh, Greenland to do the Arctic Circle Trail, planning to start in Kangasluswak in the middle of March and trying to reach Sisimut towards the end of March. Temperatures that I can expect during the day are somewhere between zero degrees Celsius and minus 25 and nighttime temperatures between minus 20 to potentially minus 40. Um, I thought I would take you through uh, the gear that I have in my pulka. Uh, part of the fun of planning a trip like this is researching the material, getting the gear. Um, and I learned an enormous amount reading blogs and looking at YouTube videos. And so I thought I was trying to give back a little bit uh, with my final choices that I've made, especially since some of the gear that I have chosen, I could find very little information online about. Now I have some uh, experience in the past. I've done Patagonia, I've done the Arctic Circle Trail in summer with my son, hiked in uh, Iceland in Hornstrandir, uh, in Nepal. Uh, but more relevantly, I also hiked in Baffin Island, the Ayuituk National Park, at approximately the same period, so March, and facing approximately the same pe uh, temperatures that I will be facing now. So I have some experience, but I must say that hike was a long time ago, and so I had to update my, uh, my material. Um, I think two disclaimers before we continue. Uh, one, I am pretty risk averse. Uh, I know that sounds strange when you're going out solo to do the Arctic Circle Trail in winter. Um, but I tend to calculate in the worst possible situations and be quite defensive in my material choices. That's one. And second, this is simply the gear that I have um, bought myself and chosen for myself, so I have no uh, financial disclosures. So let me take you through my sleep system. Um, obviously you have a liner just to keep your sleeping bag clean. In this case, the Thermolite reactor. When we'll be discussing that, you can find plenty of information online. Good pillow. And then for me, an essential part of a sleep system are down booties. One of the things that can really hinder me having a good night's sleep uh, is cold feet. These are down booties from Goosefeet Gear. Uh, you can buy them with uh, extra filling. That's what I did, so I overfilled them. Uh, and it's really something uh, great to be able to put these on at the end of a very cold day and to crawl into your sleeping bag. They also have uh, over booties, which are just a thin layer with a slightly thicker sole, uh, which allows you to quickly go outside, uh, but always be careful with that. The mattress is a well-known quantity. It's the Neo Air X-Term, uh, R value of 6.9. Had it for years, very happy with it. Pretty crinkly, but that's well known. Uh, but overall, fantastic mattress. The only downside I have uh, is that I bought this one for um, hiking in summer, so I wanted to limit the weight. And it is slightly too short for my very big winter sleeping bag. So my foot box tends to go beyond the mattress and this leads to a lot of extra condensation, which I'm really trying to avoid. So I had decided that I wanted uh, a slightly larger uh, mattress which, uh, with a length of two meters. I'm one meter 78, something like that. And so uh, when I was going to order, I saw that uh, the next generation was coming. And it's the one. R value of 7.4, slightly thicker a lot less noisy, uh, which is more comfortable. So this will be replacing the old Neo Air Xterm. Now conventional wisdom says that besides your inflatable mattress, you need, uh, or it is at least wise, to bring a second foam mattress, because if you get a puncture in the inflatable one, it's very difficult or notoriously difficult in Arctic conditions to find the leak and to repair it. So the foam mattress that I chose is from Bergans of Norway. Uh, I put in the link um, in the video. Uh, a very good mattress, uh, 1.4 centimeters thick, quite heavy, 700 grams, but it has an R value of 3.5, which is almost double the R value of two from the foldable Zetsol lights from Thermarest. I was very happy with it, but then in the course of my further research, I decided to switch to something completely different to replace this. And I must say, I'm quite looking forward to uh, the experience that I will have. And the switch will be made to this. Let me take you through it. So remembering my time with uh, the Inuit on Baffin Island, I remembered that uh, they used reindeer pelts for so many things and it is incredibly comfortable. And so I decided to find two reindeer pelts here in Belgium from people that were just uh, letting go of them because they uh, bought souvenirs in uh, Finland and didn't want them anymore. So I bought two and I uh, cut them up to size. And so now I have 
a reindeer pelt mattress which is also almost 1 meters 18. It is quite a lot thicker than the mattress that I have um, and I believe if I read what I can find on the internet that insulation should be very good. One of the easiest things is that, well, I've got these two squares. Uh, they're very easy to roll out. You just plop it down when you need uh, something to fit, sit on, when you want to cook, when you need a knee pad. Um, I'm also going to use it uh, as an insulating layer in that it's very easy to put all my electronic equipment in my pulka inside of one of these, roll it up and have it warm and insulated and have another one on top just for uh, when I have a rest break uh, in the middle of my day. So I'm very happy with it. Um, potential downsides, well, one of them is hair everywhere. Um, you can't see it now, but it's floating around um, and it doesn't seem to stop shedding. Probably due because these are tanned. The ones that they use in the Arctic have been air dried um, and so it, they're quite different. Um, and what I do not know as well is how well um, the leather side will resist to moisture. I, the air dried ones feel a lot thicker, feel a lot um, stiffer. This is very soft uh, and so it might get wet. I've uh, sprayed it with a, a waterproof spray, but I have no illusions as this is a very porous material that there is a potential that they might get wet um, or might, if I put them on the snow. Um, so I'll, I'll give you feedback afterwards uh, about how this went, but for the moment I am incredibly happy with it. Also, if you turn them around, you have a safe place to cook on. Uh, I mean, it's leather, it won't burn. Um, so it's, it's a very versatile thing. All right, now let me take you to my sleeping bag. And the sleeping bag um, is from Healthport. And it is these two parts. Uh, I could find almost no information about it when I was looking online. It's the Hellsport Spitzbergen Extreme. It weighs 3.3 kilos combined, but the headline features are this. A comfort temperature of minus 32, a limit of comfort of minus 45, and an extreme of minus 70. And I absolutely believe them in these temperatures. So let me take you through the sleeping bag. So apologies if the background noise levels are going up. I've opened up every door and window, even though it's the beginning of February because otherwise it becomes uh, insufferably warm inside of the sleeping bag. It consists of two parts. We've got an outer synthetic sleeping bag filled with 860 grams of Thermolite T3. And then you've got an inner down sleeping bag, which is filled with 860 grams of 800 and fill down. Now it's a really good idea to have this constellation because you will be perspiring. There will be water vapor that you are forming, which will move from your body towards the inside of the tent and the inside of the tent is frozen. So the dew point, the point where ice crystals will form is somewhere in the outer part of your sleeping bag. And so it's a big advantage that this happens in the synthetic part because this part loses less of its insulating capacities when it's getting wet and it is also much quicker to dry. So this is the sleeping bag closed. Um, it's very warm. The idea is that you first get out of the uh, inner sleeping bag and then you can get out and do the stuff that you need to do. The other brilliant feature of the sleeping bag is that um, the zippers are offset, so the zipper on the synthetic part is in the middle. The zippers on the down sleeping part is at the sides. So if one of the zippers fail, you still have, you don't have zippers at exactly the same location. And so the, the chances of cold spot are less. And what I really like is that the down sleeping bag, there's this option, there's a little zipper here to get both arms out. And so to still have the inner down sleeping bag on whilst you're cooking, whilst you're doing your chores in the tent, uh, and so all in all, a lot of versatility. If it's a warm night, I will simply put the Thermalite sleeping bag below me, sleep only in this one. Um, it gives you a lot of options uh, and I'm incredibly happy with my choice and looking forward to using it. So this is the setup that I will be taking with me. I'm um, really glad with my choices um, and I will certainly give uh, an honest feedback afterwards whether they were good choices. The sleeping bag, excellent quality of materials, um, very good baffles, neck baffles on the inside, um, 
it is a really solid sleeping bag and I'm really hoping or counting on the fact that you've got this um, down inner synthetic outer will mitigate the problem of the build up of condensation within the down that you would otherwise have if you have a down only sleeping bag and so keep the loft over time because this is a problem that that creeps in during a multi-day uh, hike and you get this build up of condensation very happy with the neo arm xterm next uh, i mean it, i'm guessing it's an incremental upgrade except for the crinkliness over um, the previous generation and then uh, the wild card which is the reindeer pelts at the bottom uh, they are very multifunctional i'm guessing that they are warmer than a, a foam mat but that's um, a risk i'm taking but um, we'll see how it goes so thank you very much